today in the spotlight. Winners of the Torrance Symphony's Young Artist Competitions take center stage. These dancers turn it up a notch to raise money, while kids learn about Picasso and other famous painters. We'll introduce you to an artist who's made it to the top of her field, and I'll take you to the farmer's market to find out what's in season this month. All that and more in this edition of Spotlight Torrance. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. I'm Martin Sotil and this is Spotlight Torrance. Today we come to you from the Depot restaurant. We'll tell you all about this great local eatery and why you need to stop by. But first, here's Rebecca Seed to tell us about two very young and very talented musicians who got to perform with the best the Southland has to offer. The Young Artist Winter Joy Concert is a special night for Torrance residents. And tonight, the program spotlights two exceptionally young musicians, 21-year-old Andrew Leonard and 9-year-old Jesse Chen. Andrew Leonard and Jesse Chen are no strangers to music. I started at 8 years old, so that's 13 years. I've played with the Bellflower Symphony before, but I think this is bigger. Andrew and Jesse competed against more than 40 other musicians in the Young Artist Concerto Competition for a spot to perform a solo alongside the Torrance Symphony Orchestra in the Winter Joy Concert. Are you nervous? No, I'm very excited. Playing with orchestra is a really rare ex experience. We don't get to do that very much, so hearing the sound come up from behind you like that, it's really quite a rush. I'm really excited. Andrew's mother, Deborah, flew in all the way from New Jersey to watch her son play. From the start, he just really uh, dedicated himself and just seemed to have a friendship with music and with the instrument. So I just appreciate that he's really brought a new aspect of really joy of living into our lives. As hundreds packed into the Armstrong Theater, Torrance Symphony Orchestra President Owen Griffith expressed his pride in the young performers. I'm impressed with all of them, but when the 10-year-old uh, uh, violinist, when he was only nine, but uh, he, he plays just magnificently, and I just want to encourage all the young people to say, hey, you, you can do it. The house was more than full, and many couldn't even find a seat for the popular concert. Torrance resident Jim Slattery agreed that watching young talent is quite a thrill. Well, I think it's important to support the arts, and especially the young people. Uh, they don't have a lot in the schools anymore, and so uh, it's pretty special that the organization is able to do that and uh, recognize talent and uh, give them an opportunity to perform. And finally, the moment arrives for Andrew. And for Jesse. And an ovation for these young musicians that they'll not soon forget. Over 500 people turned out for tonight's performance. And here at the Armstrong Theater, it was certainly a night to remember. Reporting for Spotlight Torrance, I'm Rebecca Seed. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you from the Depot restaurant, and with me is Jenny Robinson. She's general manager here. Jenny, hi Jenny, tell me a little bit about the restaurant. Well, we've been here since 1991. Um, it's a great fine dining restaurant, one of the only ones in downtown Torrance. A fantastic place to come for a business lunch or an occasion dinner, an anniversary, birthday, that sort of thing. We have our main dining room with lots of uh, history, just being the old train depot, and also a private dining room in the restaurant itself that holds up to 30 people which we call the wine room, and then another one just behind the restaurant, which holds up to 120, and we call that the kimono room. So what kind of food do you recommend, or what, are, what is the restaurant known for? Well, we sort of call it global cuisine, a little bit of everything. The chef has a definite Asian Pacific Rim influence on his food. Um, at lunchtime, there's some fantastic dishes. The debutante bento is really popular. It's sort of an assortment of different things. Um, lots of seafood. At dinner, the pork mushu is really good, and of course, I'm a big favorite fan of the desserts. That's my favorite. Okay, and what are the hours of operation for lunch and dinner? Well, lunchtime we're open Monday through Friday from 11 until 2, and we open for dinner from 5.30 until 9 on Mondays, and 5.30 till 10 on um, Tuesday through Saturday. Okay, and Sundays? Sundays closed all day. Okay, fantastic. Well, I am really hungry. Thank you for talking with us. And uh, now, as Jenny, you're going to show me to a table now. Yes. Okay. And uh, while I'm being escorted to my table, here's a story about some folks who really know how to work up an appetite. 
You could feel the energy as friends, family, and community poured into South High School's gymnasium. The big turnout? South High School's 7th Annual Dance Team Fundraiser. This year titled, What Are You Waiting For? An annual dance show that provides show-stopping entertainment. Dedicated parents man booths selling raffle tickets, roses, and team calendars in an effort to raise money for the dance team. Tonight I'm selling the calendars, $3 each, and I hope I'm selling it all. <laughs> this dedicated dad explained how important fundraising is. You know, everything's on a shoestring, and anything that the parents can do to help out really helps the program and the school. And, you know, t teachers don't do this for the for all the money, they just do it because of the heart. Right before the lights went down, I caught up with team advisor and former Clipper girl, Sasha Bryant, and found out what makes a winning team. You know what, it just takes a lot of practice. I'm blessed this year with like a really good group. They work really hard. Um, most of them take outside classes, they're in ballet classes, jazz classes, tap classes. But award-winning teams are built, not born. The elaborate costumes alone come with a hefty price tag. According to this advisor, the generosity of parents and community are key in helping these girls razzle-dazzle their way to the top. It's a huge team sport, you know, with the competition, so they're just supporting a huge program, just like you would for football, basketball, anything else. And then it was lights, camera, dance, as the South High squad opened with a heart-pounding, foot-tapping performance. The show unfolded into a montage of routines, with themes ranging from Asian culture, urban hip-hop, to solo interpreted performances. Every number started strong with complex, quick moves and a lot of attitude. At times it almost looked like an MTV music video. With all the bright lights cheering fans and the responsibility of remembering move after move, you gotta wonder what goes through their mind when they're out there. I'm about the next move, um, and just mostly like motivating myself, like what's going on in my head is like keep it up, keep going, stuff like that. If you have like a routine where you have to be very powerful, you can just get all your anger out into it. Whatever they were thinking, only passion showed on their faces. The audience sat mesmerized by the team's ability to go from graceful to tough in a matter of seconds. Costumes sparkled under the lights during routines like Skin, masterfully choreographed by Bryant. The show closed with bows and I nabbed the advanced squad right before they went backstage. I'm here with Shali Iman Khan and Jana Nawa, co-captains of South High's Advanced Dance Team. Now, Shali, you've been in the uh, team for three years. What kind of changes have you seen this year with the team? Um, well, for starters, this year we got a new coach. Um, we've added a lot more team members in the past three years and um, I've made new friends. We've made a reputation for ourselves because we made finals last year, so now we're known and we're a threat. Congratulations. Now, Janet, you have been with this team this year. What, what kind of training goes into this routine? What kind of practicing prepares you to put on such a phenomenal show? Um, yeah, we practice on fourth period with all the choreographers and all of the um, people that come in from all over the South Bay to teach us routines and we give us a, lump, a, a lunch hours and, and then Fridays after school we take trick class and ballet class together as a team. So overall we spend a lot of time together and we really like each other. <laughs> well you guys did a great job and I wish you good luck this year, South High. Thank you! Seth Browning, Torn City Cable 3. Boy, watching those girls dance certainly made me work up an appetite. Well, here at the depot, I have decided to start with the Indo wontons. They're deep, fr deep fried and come with two different dipping sauces. Mmm, they smell delicious. I can't wait to start them. Okay, we're gonna take a short break, but when we come back, I'll let you know how these wontons are right after this message. Mmm, mmm, they're good. Mmm, very good, very good. There's something about you, something baby. about you, baby. I can't get enough. There's something about you, baby. I got you looking at me, I'm gonna call you bluff. There's something There's something about you. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. It takes a man to be a dad. Clear you! 
Is it mice? Nope. Rats? Nope. Hogs? That's right, miss. Hogs? Energy hogs. If you're wasting energy, you'll find one in your home. Got energy hogs in your house? Now you have the power to do something about them. Log on to energyhog.org. Hey, let me go. In your dreams, Porky. Because nobody likes an energy hog. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're coming to you from the Depot restaurant. I've already started with these Indo wontons, which were absolutely out of this world. Now I'm having my second appetizer, which is rock shrimp sausage in a garlic sauce with uh, goat cheese wontons. They smell so good. I can't wait to sink my teeth into it. But in a way, I almost don't want to yet because it's a work of art. It's just so pretty on the plate. Michael Schaefer really is an artist when it comes to culinary arts. And speaking of art, Here's a story about some young future Picassos. Picasso was the first order of business for these three, four, and five-year-olds. What did you make? This is my mouth that kind of looks like a birdie. That looks great. And these are my hair, my eyes, my little bangs, my more hair, and my eyes. Amy is one of many students learning creativity through the art studio class held at the Torrance Cultural Arts Center. Why do you like art? Because it's fun. The class is run by art instructors from throughout the South Bay. Lauren Perlmutter hopes to teach her young students how to incorporate art into their lives. They learn a lot of uh, fine motor development, social skills, uh, listening skills. And the best thing is that they still can create how they see. It's, um, I would say, a balance between their structure, but we give them the room to create how they see. The hour-long class is divided into two parts. The first half is free time to explore creativity with tools such as Play-Doh, glue, foam cutouts, and, of course, lots of paint. The second half of the class consists of a lesson plan, focusing on a different artist or topic each week. Today, actually, it's a great project with cutting. We're doing a lot of um, fine motor development. We're doing a cutout of Picasso, of the portraits. The children use glue, scissors, construction paper, and blue poster board to create their own version of a Picasso painting. And over the next several weeks, they'll learn about artists such as Monet and Ansel Adams, certainly mature topics for these young students. It is a mature topic, but I know who Picasso is, and I'm excited that she's going to learn and um, the new cult, you know, he was so different, so it'll be interesting to see what she will draw. With scissors and glue flying, the children created some very impressive Picasso cutouts. Picasso's good for children, because children like to make three eyes, a couple noses, so with that they have a little time to get to enjoy making a picture of that technique. While each child created his or her own unique version of a Picasso, Everyone agreed that art education is extremely important in young people's lives. My father and I were very artistic too when we were little and I really enjoyed it and it also broadens your mind. Picasso! For Spotlight Torrance, I'm Rebecca Seed. Mm. Incredible. I've never had rock shrimp sausage before. Tasty, delicious, definitely got to try it. Well, from young Picassos to Michael Schaefer's culinary art, we're going to take you now to another artist who's made it to the top of her field. Mm, you've got to try out these sausages. They're fantastic. Mm. Mm. Really good. In celebration of California's 150th anniversary, the state got a gift. There was nothing done uh, uh, in terms of an artistic work that uh, one could look back at. Assemblyman Nakano first met Rita Schroeder at an event in Torrance, where he discovered she had painted a picture of his residential community. And she had